It's over for Diddy, but let's explain why. So while in the middle of multiple lawsuits from ex-lovers who are alleged abuse at the hands of Diddy, well, his house just got raided by the feds. The Department of Homeland Security conducting a raid at a house in Holmby Field Hills believed to be connected to Sean Combs, the rapper and music executive, perhaps being linked to a sex trafficking investigation. He got some shots of a few people coming out of the home. Those people have been detained. Now we're trying to still connect the dots. We do have some sources on scene here that we're getting this information from. We were actually the first ones here with about 30 different law enforcement vehicles at least. There are three Bearcats on scene here. This just all unfolded, Sandra, I would say, less than 10 minutes ago. We got here even before the crime scene tape came up. So uh, we're just down the hill. If you look up the street where Tony is right now to the right, you'll see one of those Bearcats and law enforcement. And on the other side of those bushes, basically, is that home that is registered to Bad Boy Films, which is part of Bad Boy Entertainment. And the home in particular is registered not only to Bad Boy Films, but to one of P. Diddy's daughters. They are one interesting takeaway from that in particular is that Diddy already got his home in his kids' names, right? That particular home is in his 16-year-old's daughter's name. Now, the reason being, Diddy is involved in a lot of lawsuits, and just in case he loses those lawsuits, he don't want to lose his homes that he purchased with his hard-earned money. Now, Homeland Security only gets involved if it's a transnational crime. In the case of Diddy, they're investigating him for sex trafficking. Now, this was a real orchestrated hit, which shows... Like, there's some fire here. They're not just rolling up this deep to Diddy just to investigate. They already got enough to charge Diddy. They're not just trying to find an extra amount of stuff, right? And you could tell that's the case because while they were raiding his L.A. home, they were also raiding his home in Miami at the same time. If this is, in fact, involving a sex trafficking investigation, we do know that according to Diddy's attorneys and the rapper himself, he has denied any wrongdoing in any of all this. So uh, there are two sides, of course. Now, Diddy kids, including his underage daughters, who I won't show here, were put in handcuffs when the feds raided the homes. If you're wondering why is the kids in handcuffs and there's no signs of Diddy, that's because whether or not he had an inkling or he knew beforehand, Diddy hopped on a private jet moments before his home was raided on his way to New York. Now, here's the interesting part about this. Apparently, like, the Homeland Security and the feds work with local security, and they planned this out on this particular date because they knew or they thought this was going to be the day Diddy would have been home. But Diddy unexpectedly hopped on a private jet and went to New York, avoiding, I guess, detainment. Out as uh, Stu was telling you up in Sky Fox, um, but we're hearing that P. Diddy may not even be here. We, of course, haven't seen him. Uh, we understand he may have flown on a private jet to New York, which I'm sure kind of threw off their plan, although this was very strategically organized. So I would assume by now, uh, whether he is in New York or not, that he is uh, likely in custody if he is involved in this. Um, but again, we are hearing that this is involving P. Diddy and sex trafficking charges. A lot of people hear trafficking and wonder what's going on. Why is Diddy being arrested for trafficking? Obviously, Diddy is a billionaire. He didn't traffic anybody. Well, not quite. Like, you see, our colloquial definition of what sex trafficking is is a lot different than the legal jargon, all right? So this is really similar to what happened with R. Kelly. So R. Kelly was found guilty and convicted on sex trafficking charges because R. Kelly and his associates and his friends and employees, they flew out women to R. Kelly for R. Kelly to have sex with. Now, some of those women were minors, which is kind of similar to what Diddy has been accused of, but we'll get to that. So, just for you to understand the legal jargon, take a look at what R. Kelly was found guilty of. In New York has found the American singer R. Kelly guilty of sex trafficking and racketeering. He was convicted of running a scheme to sexually abuse underage girls, boys and women. Over the course of a five-week trial, the prosecution laid out in lurid detail how R. Kelly ran a criminal enterprise that had recruited children and women for sex. He could spend the rest of his life behind bars. A five-week trial in New York laid out in lurid detail how the singer ran a decades-long criminal enterprise. Prosecutors said R. Kelly used a network of employees and close associates to recruit underage girls, boys, and women for sex. In case of the women they recruited for sex, R. Kelly wasn't charged with kidnapping, tying up, 
and bringing them against their will. He was charged with his associates recruiting women, right, flying them over state lines to have sex with R. Kelly. That's a crime. That is not legal. And at the R. Kelly verdict, they made sure to put out a statement saying, yo, they're going to send a message to these powerful men who believes these actions are cool. In rendering its verdict today, the jury delivered a powerful message to men like R. Kelly. No matter how long it takes, the long arm of the law will catch up with you. Did he pack it up, bruh? Go to Bali, take the Russell Simmons route, bruh. Go somewhere where they can't extradite you, bruh. Because you're going to spend a long time in jail, bruh. It's over with. 100% definitive, you're out of here, buddy. Now, Diddy is also being accused of doing something very similar as R. Kelly. See, a Jane Doe accuses Diddy of trafficking her when she was only 17 years old, almost 20 years ago. A new lawsuit is accusing Sean Diddy Combs of raping a 17-year-old girl. This is the fourth woman and fourth lawsuit against Combs in recent weeks. This latest lawsuit alleges the music mogul gang raped a woman 20 years ago when she was only 17. A woman identified as Jane Doe I alleges she was 17 when Sean Combs and two others trafficked her for sex and raped her. She was living in Michigan in 2003 when her lawsuit says she met a man who claimed he was best friends with Combs and convinced her to fly with him to New York aboard a private jet to meet Combs at his his recording studio. The lawsuit includes photos purportedly of Jane Doe with Combs in his studio. While at the studio, the lawsuit says Combs and his associates plied Ms. Doe with drugs and alcohol to the point that she could not have possibly consented. The lawsuit says the men, including Combs, then gang raped her and that afterwards she had to be helped to walk out of the building and back into a car. She was taken back to an airport and flown back to Michigan. I want to stress this because hopefully it's a learning lesson for a lot of men watching this video. It doesn't even matter if she consented or not. Him just trafficking her or flying her over from Michigan with the intent to have sex it's illegal and it's a crime. The consent part just made it a whole lot worse. Jane Doe stated she met a Diddy associate, Mr. Pierre, at a lounge. And he alerted her that he was friends with Diddy. And he even put Diddy on the line for her to speak to Diddy. And that made her comfortable to hop on a private plane and get chartered out of Michigan over to Diddy for sex. In the case of Jane Doe, she has physical evidence, pictures of her on Diddy lap and of her with Diddy that night. So they will have to explain why a 17 year old girl was chartering her plane out of Michigan over to them. If it wasn't for sex, explain why y'all flew out a 17 year old girl on a private plane at those hours of the night. I would like to hear Diddy explanation. But it's beyond the Jane Doe though, because Cassie also alleges Diddy of sex trafficking. You see those free calls that everybody laughed at and said, <laughs> like, you know, Diddy's a freak. Well, those has some form of an illegal element. Influential executive Cassie, his accuser in this lawsuit, real name Cassandra Ventura, she is a successful singer and actor. She signed to his label in 2005 and they began an on off relationship. She was 19 when it began, he was. 37. She says over the course of the next decade, she was plied with drugs, trafficked, raped, and beaten on many occasions. The Me and You singer alleging in the lawsuit filed Thursday that after the two met back in 2005, Combs lured Ms. Ventura into an ostentatious, fast-paced, and drug-fueled lifestyle and into a romantic relationship with him, adding he used illegal substances and threats of violence to force Ms. Ventura into repeated unwanted sexual encounters with male sex workers. In the case of Cassie, not all their freak-offs were consensual. Now, freak off is when Diddy and Cassie would have a threesome with sex workers. Now, Cassie would state that Diddy would like to watch her have sex with the with the uh, sex worker, and he would give them directions on sexual acts to do, and he would watch and masturbate. Well, Cassie would state that there was an occasion to where she stopped feeling it. She ain't really want to do it anymore. And one time in particular, she was at her birthday party, and Diddy wanted her to come home and have a freak off. So he came to the birthday party after she related through text messages that she didn't want to do it. 
that he actually came to the birthday party, dragged her out, beat her up, and took her to the freak off to do it. So it was inconsensual, but where the trafficking part comes into play, she said she didn't want to do it, and you legit forced her to the hotel to engage into the freak off under threats and coercion. That right there is a crime. What it appears, man, it appears that Diddy made a lot of reckless decisions um, early in his life. But honestly, bro, Cassie and Diddy wasn't too long ago. So it wasn't early in his life. Diddy just made bad decisions. Now, whether or not this is true or not, we will find out in a court of law. But it looks like Diddy is toast, yo. Because it's not just Cassie or the 17-year-old Jane Doe. There's about four other lawsuits out there that I know of alleging something very similar. And there are dozens of other lawsuits coming down the pipeline. But I'm sure the feds is currently working with all accusers to try to paint this case on Diddy because Cassie's lawyer did come out and say that they would cooperate with all investigations with the feds against Diddy, even after Diddy paid 30 to $50 million. Cassie's lawyer stated, we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those that have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Coons responsible for his depraved conduct. Paying $50 million and then that person still cooperating to send you to jail is the biggest L I've probably ever seen, man. But y'all let me know in the comment section, what do you guys think? Do y'all feel like Diddy is guilty? How do you guys think this is going to play out? And if you're still watching, click on the video somewhere on my screen to find out about why Finesse two times came to LA looking for WAC 100 supposedly after WAC 100 said this. Click on this video here to find out what I'm talking about. I'm out of here, folks. Peace.